Hello everyone, this is the first in a series of videos that are intended to help explain Blackboard to student organization leaders and advisors. Um, the intention here being to make it a more effective tool for students to utilize. So the first thing we're going to talk about is track training. This is a mandatory training from the university that is required in order to be in compliance with FERPA. Now, we need this training because student and advisor employee IDs are associated with Blackboard accounts. And when you are the leader of an organization, it is possible for you to access this information. Now, there's nothing you can really do with this info, but technically, by FERPA guidelines, this is protected information. As such, track training is really a series of check marks that acknowledges that leaders are able to view this information and says that you are okay with it. So to begin, we're starting here at the NDSU homepage, and we'll go to the CSO webpage. So this is accomplished by just sticking at the end of NDSU.edu, SG slash CSO. Um, this is the webpage for the Congress of Student Organizations and is, tended, it is intended to serve as a hub for finding online resources for student organizations. So here on the left, we see the Blackboard Organization Enrollment link. And following this takes us to our nice landing page. This big link to taking track training is the key to taking track training. Um, but first, I just want to point out that we do have screenshots on how to take it as well that um, will assist you in case you forget everything I say in the video. So following this link, we are asked to log in using our EID. And now this is the exact same ID that you would use for accessing Blackboard or for logging in to a campus computer cluster. From here, the organization sign-up process is explained. So this goes over what I just covered at the beginning regarding the necessity of track training, but also has information regarding secondary accounts. These are Blackboard shells that allow you to access organizations without having your ID number associated. So if you are uncomfortable with it, you can still participate in student organizations through one of these shells, which are constructed by the IT department. Assuming that you do not have an issue with it, we can just click Proceed. Here is all of the required information for student organizations. So we've got the Eligibility and Participation in Co-Curricular Activities document, the Student Code of Conduct, and the Equal Opportunity Policy. All are very important, and I strongly encourage you to read them. Moving down, we cover the conditions of membership in CSO. Um, this includes what is expected of student leaders, um, and please note that these conditions are enforced and monitored by the Student Life Office, so it is important that you are aware of them. Um, and this is, if once you've read them and agreed to them, you can simply click I agree. Um, second, you have to agree to support the anti-hazing policy, which is vitally important. And third, you must agree to that you understand the equal opportunity policy. Once you click I agree to all three, you simply hit submit, and congratulations, you've completed track training. 